Hey everyone, I'm Dom and I'm the community manager at Star Atlas. I want to start something a little new on this channel where I go over what happened throughout the month in the Star Atlas world. That includes things like releases, new content, and of course, whatever sneak peeks we put out there. Star Atlas has a lot going on and it can sometimes be a little difficult to stay up to date on everything. So the goal here is to be a one-stop shop at the end of the month where you can get all the Star Atlas news. I'm not exactly sure how long this video is going to be. We're going to play it by ear here. Um, I'm sure there'll be a, also a lot of learning in between these videos. Uh, I'll need your guys' help with that, of course, so leave a comment down below how you think this video is going. I'll also be linking everything I talk about in the description below if you want to get a better look. Anyways, on to the video. That's enough rambling. I'm going to split this video into three different parts. Launches, updates, and content slash sneak peeks. So let's get started. First things first, launches. So the first launch that we had was the Platinum Surge event in Escape Velocity. If you guys don't know, Escape Velocity is a test for our second game called Star Atlas Golden Era, which is a game being co-developed alongside the game you guys already know in UE5. So Star Atlas Golden Era is a browser-based strategy game. Uh, a Surge event, on the other hand, is an event that happens in Escape Velocity where a certain tier of loot that you can find has their probabilities buffed for a certain time period. Uh, during this Platinum Surge event, there was two Ogrika Sumpa that were found and one Pierce D9. And those were found by three different people, no bots, super happy about that, congrats to them. Moving on to the next launch was Showroom R2.1. This was an update to the UE5 game, Star Atlas. So all ships are flyable, there was a new jetpack feature, there's a new ground race game mode. Now this is solo for now, but in R2.2, in that update, it's going to be multiplayer. And that is basically Space Mario Kart, it's super cool, I'm, I'm really excited for that one actually. The next thing we launched with Showroom R2.1 is Experimental Mode. Now, this is a little different. It basically lets, if you if you toggle it on, you can see a bunch of different maps that are not officially released, but you can see them in their gray box phase and follow along with the development. You guys know what we like when you guys can follow along with the development that we have. Next thing for Showroom R2.1 is the test flight feature. So every three days, there are two different manufacturers that have their large ships and below available for test flight so every three days you can check in in the star atlas showroom see what ships are flyable see what ships are available for test flight and yeah test them out and the next thing that happened in showroom r 2.1 was the in-game galactic marketplace integration so you can basically buy ships in the game which is pretty cool and that's all on the blockchain which is awesome the next launch which was a really big deal is we transition from an infinite supply of food, fuel, ammunition, and toolkits, and we transition that to a player-driven economy. So this happened by putting a 30-day supply of all four resources onto the marketplace and getting rid of the infinite supply. Now, it was gobbled up in, I think it was less than 24 hours, and the, uh, the econ team knew that it was going to go pretty fast. Uh, some people were a little little upset that there was no warning, so I want to give a little context on that decision here. We weren't able to give a heads up on the infinite supply turning off, because that would basically allow players to purchase as many R4s as they want and hoard them before the infinite supply turned off, which would effectively kill the player-driven economy for R4s before it started. Moving on, we released the Star Atlas Lore Wiki. Now, this was a big deal. This is a big deal to me. Um, this is one of my favorite releases of the month, actually. And the reason is, is I get a lot of new people who ask me, Dominic, where can I find a just one place where I can read about all the lore in Star Atlas? And I'd always tell them, sorry, we don't have something like that. Go read the Medium articles or something like that. So now we have a wiki where you can learn everything about the Star Atlas lore. So you can go to lore.staratlas.com. And you can learn things about the different factions, Mud, Oni, and Ooster. You can learn about the history of the Gallia Expanse. You can learn about characters and rule breakers. You can learn about planets, moons, resources. You can learn about ship manufacturers, the configurations, uh, politics. You can learn about the species and races, the governments and groups, and the religion and culture. So it's a, it's a big deal. You can learn about everything that you could dream of in the Star Atlas lore. And this is going to be updated every month, so you can you can check back every month and you can find out what the, the new lore that they added is. The next launch that we had was the State of the Economy Quarter 2 report. 
which is basically a report that covers the Star Atlas economy. Uh, I'm not going to go into exactly what they talked about in here because it would take me like four hours. Uh, so I'm going to go over the key highlights and then, like I said, I'll put all the links in the description down below uh, and you can read this yourself. It's really detailed and you'll learn a lot, so I, I definitely recommend it. So the key highlights here in this report are the ecosystem engagement increased by approximately 200% quarter over quarter. Peer-to-peer -peer trade and resources totaled 19.87 million Atlas from June 8th through June 27th. Claim stakes deposited in faction claims totaled 2.57 million USD in VWAP. Escape Velocity participants earned an average wage of 147 Atlas per hour of gameplay. The size of the ship labor force contracted by 4.2%. Employed residents and citizens claimed 427.57 million Atlas. So that's the key highlights there. Like I said, in the description down below if you want to go read that. The last launch that I'm going to talk about here, last but certainly not least, is we released three different Armstrong Miner ships. And this is called Destination Starbase. So I'm going to go over these three different ships. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why they're beneficial, what's their use case, and what's so cool about Destination Starbase and these minor ships. So in Destination Starbase, there are three ships that were released and they're all part of the Armstrong manufacturer. So the first one is an Armstrong Imp Tip, which is a small miner. The second one is an Armstrong Imp Tap, which is a medium miner. And the third one is an Armstrong Imp, and that's a capital miner. So the cool thing about these minor ships are, firstly, they have dual function, meaning that you can put them in faction fleet and you can earn Atlas, or you can put them in faction claims and you can earn resources. So one day you can be like, hey, I wanna, I wanna earn some Atlas, put it, put it in a faction fleet. Next day you can be like, okay, now I want some resources. Then you can put it in faction claims, which is pretty cool. Uh, the next cool thing about them is that they're gonna have a unique utility in the next iterative Sage release, which is the extraction and crafting release. I don't know exactly what we've talked about with that. So I'll let you guys learn more about that in the future. And the next one, which is a little bit, a little bit of theory crafting here, is the high risk zone utility in the UE5 game when that does come online. And what I mean by this is taking a claim stake into the high risk zone. That's going to take time to deploy, set up, and do all that kind of stuff. On the other end, it's going to take time to bring your claim stake back and get out of there. So the cool thing about a miner ship is you can get in, get the resources get out of the high risk zone. I think that's a really underrated utility factor here. And then last but not least, I gotta be a little bit of a salesman here because I, I really do think that these ships are awesome, is that they're 50% off. They're 50% off for the first 30% of each ship, the supply. All right, that is it for launches. Now I'm gonna move on to updates. For updates, the first one that I wanna talk about is the San Diego meetup in July. So this meetup is happening July 19th, and it's going to be in San Diego at PlayGG. Uh, I'll be there. Michael Wagner is going to be there. A lot of other Star Atlas employees are going to be there. And I think we already have about 20 people who signed up. I'm going to leave a link down below to where you can sign up, and it'll tell you more about where it is and all that those juicy details. The next update I want to go over is Sage Escape Velocity, the thing we just talked about, is actually sunsetting on July 7th. So it's going away. There will be no more escape velocity, no more testing movement it's going away. Moving on, an update to Sage Escape Velocity was it were the anti-bot measures that we, we implemented into the loot that you find in Escape Velocity. So this anti-bot measure was a ceiling that known bots can make from Escape Velocity. Basically meaning that we're going to cap the amount of resources that a bot is able to extract from escape velocity. Now don't worry, the ceiling does not exceed the amount that a genuine player could discover. So there's nothing to be worried about if you're just a, a fair human player. Uh, next thing that I want to talk about here is the patches for R2.1. This is R2.1.1 and R2.1.2. There were two different patches this month. These patches included one of the biggest bugs that we had in showroom R2.1 was an issue where the player was stuck underground when they first loaded the showroom. So that was fixed. We had a lot of bug fixes to photo mode, ground racing. We had a lot of bug fixes there, dog fighting arena, outpost 39, a lot of improvements to ships, sound effects. And then we also fixed the leaderboards. Like I said, I'm going to link these uh, different uh, discord announcement patch notes 
down below so you can read them yourself. I'm not going to go into everything here. Moving on, one of the bigger updates that has a lot of people talking right now is the ship's V2 config update. So each ship has crew, components, modules, crew stations, and interior modules that it comes with. These were updated because, and I'm quoting our director of game system designs here, is they were needed for the health and longevity of the game. V1 configs were not balanced and had too much subject variation. I completely agree here. Anything that benefits the longevity of the game, I'm for. So actually, you can read about the config V2 update in the Star Atlas lore wiki. So go check that out and you can find that. All right, moving on the last section here, content and sneak peeks. So the first one is we released a flight instruction video. Now in this video, Donovan goes over all the different flight instructions that you need to be a good Star Atlas pilot. Uh, it's actually a really useful video. I've gone back to it two or three times just to get myself set up for R2.1. It's really good. Like I said, go check it out if you want to learn the most effective way to fly in the showroom. Moving on to the sneak peeks that we had this month. There are two different sneak peeks. The first one is of an extra small Fimble Energy Rapid Fire mounted weapon. Should have it on the screen right now. This is for your ship, by the way. The Fimble line is, is really cool. This reminds me of something that I'd find in a war in like the 1900s. The next sneak peek that we had was the extra small Opal Energy Rapid Fire mounted weapon. I really like this design. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's super sleek, super futuristic. I think the Opal manufacturer is a bit underrated right now, but that's just my opinion. Don't come after me. Anyways, that's everything. That's it for June's recap. I'm really looking forward to doing this monthly and uploading on my YouTube channel more often. Click the buttons down below if you liked it and comment down below if you enjoyed this or have any feedback. I'll see you next time for July's recap. Ciao, everybody.